Hi weaving friends welcome to this new video about how to make a reed stand a really fantastic project to organize your weaving space. Before I get started I would just like to ask you to subscribe, like this video, share with anyone you think would be interested. I also wanted to let you know that all of the notes and printable pdf will be on the blog and that really has to be used in conjunction with the video. There are lots of measurements on the blog that aren't in the video and there are demonstrations in the video that aren't on the blog so use them together and I hope you enjoy the project. Okay so we're starting out by just going through all of the pieces. Here we have the back piece and the measurements as I have already said all of this is in the printable pdf which is on the blog and you will find the link for that down below. Then we have the base piece very similar in measurements to the back piece as you can see. Over here we have the side base pieces these are going to help to form the frame of your reed holder. There are two of those pieces that we've got there. You can see the sort of beveled edges um, that my husband has done on one end. The details about that are also on the blog. Then we have the front piece that's going to sort of brace the frame at the very front. At the back here we have some side arms. These are to stabilize the reed holder up a little bit higher. All of these pieces will make a lot more sense as we progress through the video and you can see it actually being put together. This is a top front piece and over here we have the dowel pieces so these are the horizontal dowel pieces. These are going to go across the reed holder and actually make the compartments for your reeds to sit in. Then we have the vertical dowel pieces, there are two of those and they once again are more to stabilize at the front. Then we have 22 screws. Um, and what my husband's showing here is that you can use this different type of screw that has a square head as well. It just depends on what you've already got. So here is talking about the beveled edges and the measurements for this are on the blog. But yeah, basically he's measured those pieces, cut the edges off or the corners off and then sanded them so that they look nice. That's an optional thing, but it does look really nice. Okay, so here we're having a look at the drill bit with the screws. So my husband said if you don't know the sizes of your drill bits, a good way to measure is to hold it up in front of the screw. You'll be able to see the teeth of the screw behind the actual drill bit. Body of the drill bit and the screw will be the same size. So here's the part for drilling the holes. On the back piece you measure down 21 centimeters and drill a hole and you measure another 2 centimeters so 23 centimeters from the top and drill there. From the bottom up on the back piece you're going to drill up 14.5 centimeters and another one at 6 centimeters. And each of the holes are one centimeter in from the edges. So down the bottom, two centimeters from the side and drill a hole. So we can have a look at those holes here just so that you can see them a little bit better. Okay, so we've got the 21 and the 23 centimeters down there, one centimeter in. From the bottom going up, we've got 14 centimeters drill a hole and then it's six centimeters up. Once again they're one centimeter in from the edge except for the bottom they are one centimeter up from the bottom and two centimeters in from the edge. This is the base piece now. Here we're measuring five centimeters in on both sides one centimeter in from the edge again. Then halfway along, which is 31 centimeters, you drill a hole on either side 
and then at the other end you measure two centimeters down and one centimeter in from each side and drill holes there. Now we've got the base side pieces. So this one is 31 centimeters in, which is halfway. The next hole is two centimeters in from the bottom and the top one is five centimeters in. On the end we drill in five centimeters from the base and two centimeters from the top and then at the front on the edge we drill a hole five centimeters up. Inside of base piece one inside of the base side piece one we're putting the holes for the dowel. We've used an eight, meter, eight millimeter drill bit to drill these holes that matches with the eight millimeter dowel. These are all 12 centimeters apart measuring from the back and right down the middle. Each of these is 12 centimeters apart get five sections which is four holes. These holes are all about seven millimeters deep. Now this here's the front piece. Measure two centimeters in from both sides and one centimeter up. And this one is two centimeters down and one centimeter in. And then the dowel holes at the edge are one centimeter in and so seven millimeters deep. For the upper side arms, we're doing 12 centimeter increments again, still with that eight millimeter drill bit and halfway across or in the middle of the piece. Once again, the seven millimeter depth. At the end there, you measure in two centimeters and I think it's one cent or 1.1 centimeter down. Yeah, 1.1 centimeter from the end. Measure one centimeter up from the bottom of the arm and 1.1 down from the top. So that's on the end of the arms. Now for the upper front piece, measure two centimeters up from the bottom and drill a hole one centimeter in from the edge. Now, before you use any of your screws, it's great to just rub them across some candle wax and it makes it so much easier to drill them in or screw them in. So now we've got the back piece and we're attaching that to the base with the screws. You can choose to drill the screws in or you can just put them in with a screwdriver as my husband's doing there. So that's the back piece. We're going to lay it on its side and then we've got one of the base side pieces. So you can see the dowel holes there and you lay that on the inside. We'll get a different angle on that in a moment so that you can really see how it's looking on the inside and we start to screw that into the into place with all the holes that we've pre-drilled. So there you can see how it's laying on its side and we're going to pop those screws into place. All of your drill holes should line up. If you're wondering why some of our drill holes look a little bit bigger, um, this is just the drill holes I'm talking about, not the dowel holes. It's because my husband actually put this together and then took it apart again to do the video. So some of our holes are a bit bigger because they've already had screws in them. That's the only reason why. And then um, you can tighten things up at the end once you've got all of your screws in with the drill, electric drill, if you need to. 
My husband's also, he found that he needed to drill an extra hole in the middle of the base and, and the, the back piece where they attach. He felt like it just needed that extra little bit of stabilization. And so he chose to put an extra hole right in the middle and then to pop another screw in there. And once he did that, then the back and the base piece came together a lot more nicely. So now he's got the other base side piece and that goes on the side like so. But before we actually drill that in, we pop the horizontal dowel pieces in. They don't need to be glued. They wedge very nicely into those holes that we've drilled for the dowel. And once your other side base piece goes on and the, the dowel's all wedged into those holes as well, it's very stable and there's no need for glue there. The only time we use the glue is at the front dowel pieces where it needs that little extra bit of help. So you fit all of those dowels into the holes on the opposite side as well until it all seems stable and then finish off the screws that you started at the back. Now this reed holder cost us about 30 Australian dollars in new timber. Of course it doesn't include the fact that we already had a handsaw and an electric drill but it's a very cheap option because they're quite expensive to buy ready-made. So we're just finishing off the rest of the screws. Just check before you do this that all of your dowel are still in place, that none of them have popped out. You just want to have a check of that before you put in the final screws. So this is how we're looking now. We're ready to put on that front piece. This is finalizing the frame of the reed holder, making everything sturdy. So we're just going to put the screws in there in the holes that have already been drilled. You can see here um, what I was talking about before that the holes look a bit bigger because they've had screws in them previously. So we should have four screws in the front there. So this is the uh, vertical dowel with the arms. Make sure when you're putting on the arm that your um, holes, dowel holes are on the inside. That's going to be important in a moment. That vertical dowel at the front is just resting the arm there for us at the moment. We are going to glue that in place afterwards, uh, but it's just to hold that arm straight so that we can get that screwed in first. two screws for that one. You need two screws to stabilize it. And then we start putting in the rest of the horizontal dowel and they'll match up with the dowel that we put at the bottom section already. And that creates our petitions for our reeds to sit in. Now we're going to pop in a little dab of glue into the bottom hole 
both bottom holes. Um, and this is going to help to put our vertical dowel in. You, you also need to put a little bit of glue on the top of the dowel. This is PVA glue that we are using here. You can use any wood glue. And then you're gonna fit those into the holes. So you'll have one hole underneath and you'll have one hole on that front piece and the dowel's gonna fit in there. These vertical dowels are to help hold the whole frame in place. So now we're going to pop a bit of glue in. You can either put it on the top of that dowel piece or you can put it in the hole that you're going to use. Once again, make sure all, you've, all of your dowel holes on the arm are on the inside because you need to match those up with the dowels that are already there. So then you just click them all into place. You want to make sure that they're really in there. Everything's nice and sturdy so it's not going to pop out while you're putting in the screw for the arm. So you can probably see at this point that it doesn't take all that long. Once you've got all of your pieces prepared, all of your pieces cut, all of your holes pre-drilled, it really doesn't take very long to actually get this reed holder together. Um, and my husband is, uh, he's not been trained in wood. He just um, sort of makes things up as he goes along, measures as he goes. And it's only when I ask him to redo something that we have to actually think about how he's done it. But you, the, but you don't need that much experience with wood to be able to put something like this together. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so now we've got the top front piece. This is the last piece that's going to help to stabilize everything. And I'm just drilling those screws into those pre-made holes there. And we do the same on the opposite side. And that's it that's our reed holder finished uh, I should have mentioned at the start that if you want to stain or paint your reed holder that would be easiest done before you actually assemble it so grab all of your pieces and you can stain them or paint them or decorate them however you want to let them dry completely and then assemble all of the pieces I think that would be much easier than trying to do that at this point. You can see here how um, you can just put your reeds in there vertically. What I really like about this is that I can put all my different sized ones in different sections in order and then I've still got room to put in my stick shuttles and my pickup sticks and things like that as well. So it has made my little studio space a lot neater, a lot tidier. And now I can just pick out which reed I want at any given time very easily because they're in order. I hope you enjoyed this project and if you did, please give us a like and a subscribe. Leave us a comment down below letting us know what you think. And of course, if you complete this project, we would love to hear about how it went for you. Well, that's it from us today, folks. Until next time, happy weaving. Mm -hmm.